Shadow Stockman, he had, a, he had a, uh, an artist come along and sculpture this wonderful bull before he died. And uh, what's his name, Andy? Nick Knack. Nick <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nick Knack. <laughs> and he, he had this on his mantle, mantle piece at home, and he thought, hmm, I could really, what I would really like to do is give my Stockman a present. He, he'd done a fantastic job, looked at this ball, you know, so can you scan me the this object. He said, yeah, sure. Okay. So literally, this is a scan of the sculptor's uh, um, replica of his bull. So we scanned it, we then modelled it, and he, we had it produced in silver, and he gave it to his stockman as a present, a lifelong present, for looking at this prize bull. So, I'm talking about, you must open your mind, anything is possible in this <laughs> one. <laughs> Again, We've, um, we've recently had an exercise to look at surgeons' hands. Why would I want to look at surgeon ha surgeons' hands? Surgeon hands have to have gloves on them. Gloves that they have to have during operations. They can't burst. They have to get the right texture. If they're too tight, it's going like this. When the hand's gone numb, and that's not a good idea when you have an operation. If it's too slack, it might burst, and all the other things. So, Again, another application, scanning something to create something else, perfect, rather than just have a standard model. We don't have to uh, stick at all the other things. We come from an engineering background, and here are typical parts that can be, can be scanned and be manufactured. The wheel, the seats, the engine, and, and not, not only any engine, this particular uh, range of parts, was actually came from uh, Steve McQueen, who one of you might remember as something to do with films, but he was also crazy on running around the desert on a motorcycle. He created this particular motorcycle for the Batiste Desert Racer. There was only one left. They asked us to could we do something, so we scanned it, we created all the, the model, so it's, they're now being cast as, as, as models of his famous uh, uh, motorcycle. But we captured enough detail in the previous one to actually remanufacture and build a new motorcycle. And it, it, it just goes on. So we can go look at the old locomotive uh, series. This is, uh, believe it or not, a bogey of a, of a high-speed train. But it's not high-speed train in England. This was a train in the middle of China. Uh, they decided that they have a high-speed train, but we're going to actually use all designed uh, bogies for the railway, and somebody said, hmm, don't think we should do that. I think we ought to check if, it, if it's still, oh, it'll be all right. I said, well, what if it comes off? Well, you know, there's quite a few more people left. Don't worry about it. So, uh, so actually, we flew to Hong Kong. We actually scanned the, the, the bogey and then <laughs> modeled it up. It's a complete engineering design, as it was originally. They then took it into computer technology to decide whether this design was strong enough, fast enough, to take uh, this, the train from Hong Kong to, to Beijing. And so, I could go on all day really, but if you can think about 3D technology now, in the, in the county of Lincolnshire, with your five technical cells that have been suggested, you can come to these cells, and with data capture, you can open any business up, it'll help you solve your problems, using 3D printing that Mike spoke about before, that could help you in the prototype stages, but really, it's not concentrated into anyone, any sector, but every sector it can be used into. Well, that's been fascinating. We've got, got a couple of minutes actually before lunch. So, does anybody have any questions for the guys? There may be one down here earlier on. Was there yeah. any answers? Well, yeah, it depends on what, what you want to use them for. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know. You just do that. I mean, we. Um, it's there, yeah. I mean, we did one of the richest men in the world. <laughs> um, his wife is English. She comes from Staffordshire. Um, as a Christmas present last year, she wanted to present him with three bronze statues of their children. They commissioned uh, uh, a very, very clever artist who said, impossible. It'll take me six months just to use photographs, sketches, all this type of thing to get the proportions right of children 
to build the armature from which she will build the clay sculpture and then cast it in bronze. She said, it's impossible, I can't do it in the time frame. So then the, the sort of cogs and starting going, like, oh, well, what happens if we could scan them? And mm, what happens if we could get a 3D model of them? And then we could take it down to a machine shop and get a big block of polystyrene and we could mill the shape of the children out so they're perfectly proportioned and she could use that as the core to create these bronzes. Hence, we were on a plane to, to, to Geneva, hence we went to her home, which is on Lake Geneva, you would be surprised if you had that sort of money. I mean, just to give you an idea of the, the scale of this, this operation, this house was huge, it had huge gardens, it had its own um, little harbour in front of it where it kept his yacht. The children had a um, rare breed farm on the... <laughs> in the back garden, but the back garden was a little bit more the back garden, because they all, each of them had their own golf buggy to drive around to feed these for every. Anyway, we scanned these children, and the, the, we created the file. It did go off to a machine shop. It was cut in an uh, industrial polystyrene. She then had the armature of which to build it in. So, yeah, all the sketches and all the photographs that she would have taken six months just to get all the, the pieces together were done in, in about four weeks. What you have got to remember is, for examples like this, you know, example, Boeing 747 landing gear, you'll all be pleased to know, was developed about 30 years ago when there wasn't CAD. So there are all 2D drawings for that. Now in the modern day, they're trying to get it back into CAD. How can they do that? They can scan it, create a model, and now check it and see if it was actually safe to be flying in the first place when before they actually just kind of sucked it in sea. So it, it, yes, it can be used as a CAD model, this also allows you the tools to look at what you've got because you create your CAD model, that's theoretical, the perfect being. When you've manufactured that, it's normally nothing like the CAD model. So how do you prove whether it's actually fit? You can scan it, do your stress analysis then on what you've actually physically made and compare the differences. So it's a tool, you can use it as a CAD model, you can use it to correct your CAD model, you can use it to inspect against your CAD model once you've made your object. So, there's lots of different routes you can go down. It's just a means of capturing information and data on any particular object. Okay, it's probably time for one more question before we Fire away. It's, it's probably that question, but think if, if you had a drawing that was very good drawing that looked 3D, would it, would it be any good to scan at all, or does it have to be 3D? Yeah, a 3D flat drawing as such, we, we, we can't. I'll, I'll, I'll stand corrected. In, in a three, if it was a, if it was a three D drawing of that, yeah. there wouldn't be a three D drawing. That was built into many many drawings yeah. in different sections, yeah. um, and in and as such, then we couldn't really to turn that two D into three D manufacturing. I'll stand corrected because what we what we have done, a guy gave us a business card and said, um, my boss is it's our twenty first birthday anniversary or something. He said, I want we want a model for him of of the company logo. We did actually manage to scan the business card and print a 3D model to give it to him. But that was a, a concise shape and it didn't have many, many sections because this particular thing was, was manufactured from a number of welded sections. So, in principle, no, but it, in certain cases, the answer could be yes. I'm just wondering how far you can push it. No, if, if, it's, if it's something that, that's a 2D shape that's an entity on itself and not made up of 100 different component parts, we stand a chance of doing exactly that, yeah. Fabulous, thank you. Well, I think we can probably all smell lunch, or smell lunch piping through. So, uh, probably what's going to do.